Hey all, my name is Kurt and I'm here with Trenton. Welcome to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar and tonight Trenton we have reached the pinnacle. We've climbed that mountain and we're now on top. I, I thought the episode that I was able to curate would have been the pinnacle. No sir. I, I disagree with your, with your pinnacle uh, notion, <laughs> but I'll let you have it. <laughs> Listen, we're going to continue our series and finalize it tonight with our top five non-allocated bourbons. And Trenton knows that's my favorite. Yep. And, and I know Trenton, like I said in the last video, Trenton's a monster when it comes to allocated. But I love finding stuff on the shelf that's just great. Yeah, I know. I, I really do. I I'll, really I'll love it. I'll give that to you. You do. So I'm looking forward to this one. So so don't, don't, don't spoil it for me. Okay. Don't spoil it for me. All right. But anyways, we'll get to it, but we got top five. Now, again, just like last time, we had four of us that were doing all the tastings, myself, Trenton, my good friend Justin, and my brother Kent. We're all in agreement from five to one on this list. I don't remember the number five, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. <laughs> but before we do that, we have a our last live show coming up this Friday, 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time. We're going to be blind tasting the top five allocated uh, bourbons that was in the previous video. If you didn't watch it, I'll, I'll attempt to put it somewhere up here if I remember. I usually Babe, edit these you videos. Hear that? I usually edit these. Attempt. I usually, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to give myself some some pet cushion there. I usually edit these videos at like 2 a.m. So sometimes I forget. But we're also going to we're going to pick out the number one, or maybe we'll just pick out a couple in this lineup here and put them in the blind with the allocated and see we should if they can go head to head. We should mix yeah. it up and have. Either your mom or Michelle, yeah. we don't know what's in them. Yeah. What allocated or non-allocated are in the floor. One might be a dead giveaway. We'll talk about it when it comes okay. up. But All right. um, also we have uh, our our last video of 2022 is going to be um, our outlook on 2023. We'll give some stats and updates on how this year went and also some of the plans, barrel picks, et cetera, that we have coming next year. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We're not going to be, it's not going to be a list. We're not going to be reviewing a bourbon or a whiskey. We'll be drinking something. Maybe I'll yep. drink my favorite bottle from this year. I'm going to refer to it like a celebration. Video. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna really celebrate what happened here in 2022 and give you our plans of what's coming up in 2023. Celebration, I like that. Yeah, that's man. Good. Yeah, yeah, I like it. All right, what's what's this? What's All this right. number five? Because you I don't ready remember, for this? I don't remember it. Number five on our list. It does my heart good, Trenton. <laughs> it really does. Every time we can, I can come up with a, with a bottle like this, and you remember I brought it home. Yes, I and, do remember that. And I just saw it. I saw it on the shelf. It's a 10-year bourbon. And I'm like, mm, 50 bucks. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. 10 cup, 10-year. I know that might surprise some of you folks. I know it might. I made sure that it was at least in our bottles of tastings that we had for the four of us. Yeah. I wasn't sure where it was going to rank or where it was going to fall, but I was elated that we put it in number five because... I honestly can't remember the last time I had a low proof bourbon with that much flavor. 84 proof, about 50 bucks, 10 year bourbon from Tin Cup. I, I will say, usually when I drink a lower proof, and this is kind of why I steer away from lower proof offerings from different different distilleries and things, is that I have a really hard time, this is a meat problem, mm -hmm. I have a really hard time discerning flavors in low proof whiskeys and bourbons and stuff, but for this, like the main thing I get from this is almost like a a, a raisin, like one of those sun-made little, little raisin packs that you used to get in elementary Absolute. school. Absolutely, raisin is on my notes. Really? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But that's it's really good. But I'm having a hard time. Like there's some some really like light caramels and, and things in Correct. there. Correct. But mainly it's like a like an earthy raisin. Okay, I'm gonna run this past you. Okay. Okay, I didn't get it, but on my notes, I want I put very fruity raisin. Fruity and light caramel just like you said now on their website tin cup website they they have their tasting note as sweet peppers i thought that was very interesting if you really try to sip it now i know like i know a yellow a orange red correct like a like a like a, like a sweet pepper no they didn't specify yeah. but that's not too far off the beaten path i kind of get you. it it's weird once it's in your head you're like yeah, maybe. No, I didn't come up with that. I read that off their website. That's the but, first time I've ever heard that note, and it's well, it's kind of spot on. <laughs> it's weird. One thing I can guarantee you, especially, and I talk to people all the time, and so do you, but I, I do via, via Facebook uh, and Instagram messaging. 
a lot of folks ask about lower proof bourbons. This is a great because they really can't get into those barrel strings yeah. at the moment. Yeah. You know, they're working on their journey. An unbelievable option, full of flavor, 84 proof. You can't beat it. I'll get, I'll get off that. I'm, I'm just love that, that that's in there though. It does my heart? Is this your it. favorite out of the five? It seemed like you. I can't say it's my favorite, but I, I just you know, 50 bucks, 84 proof. I don't know. Yeah. It just kind of gets me a little amped up. I can see that. It's pretty right. good. The next one, Trenton, it was really on your list. This I was really I was on your rooting list, for right? this one. Yeah. I'm glad it placed where it did. Yeah. I was hoping it'd get a little bit more up there. Absolutely. Number four, Free Ranch. Now, this one, this one, Trenton, is another one about 50 bucks. It's uh, 90 proof. What I absolutely love about this is it's Free Ranch is, is a grain to, gla grain to grass. Glass. Thank you. Yeah. A grain to glass distillery and what I mean by that they grow all their grains right on the farm right on the ranch there distill the whole nine yards everything is done right there number two what I love about this is all the information that you need to know is right on that label I do really like that you, you I don't have my glasses with me right off hand but 66% yellow dent corn 10% winter wheat 11.4% winter rye and 12% two row barley yeah. malted on site yeah so four grain but everything's on there. Anything imaginable is on there. And as a consumer, I absolutely love that you have you have all the information you need right on that label. Non-chill filtered too. This bottle's non-chill filtered. All right. I'm going to be coming out of left field here as I as I usually do. So don't take a sip just yet. Okay. I, I was banned from doing laundry at home because I used to mix in like shirts with towels, and apparently that's not acceptable. So I, I haven't been doing laundry much, and so I recently put some towels in, and I left them there for a few days in the wash. And I opened the wash, and I was like, ooh, it, it, it smells weird in here. It kind of smells like what I'm getting on the nose here. Like musty, what? musty, or like if you accidentally <laughs> left something in the wash for a couple days after it finished. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it's good, though. Sure. <laughs> I'm not getting any of that. No. However, you know, I could appreciate. Yeah. I can appreciate that. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the most unique four grains I've had this year. Yeah. And I, and I, I, agree. I absolutely love it. The only thing that bums me out is that it's not available in Indiana. I don't even know where you got this from. I think somebody sent it to you or something. Right? Picked it up in Vegas. Oh, that's when right. My, when, my, when your mom and I went with uh, the in laws out there to Vegas. That's right. But it's very good. Uh, you know, I, I love everything about it, everything I've already spoken about. Uh, the flavors are great. Yeah. You can tell it's it's a nice four grain there. It lends a little bit of earthiness to it, too. But, I mean, I think it's almost a bit savory. Yeah. Just, a, you know, a bit savory even. You got a little, little, little hint of orange or apple okay. or something like that at the beginning. It's something. I was just going to ask you about the orange. Yeah. And I usually don't like orange. But it's it's subtle enough where mm -hmm. you can appreciate mm -hmm. it, or I can appreciate yeah. it rather. Some vanilla. There's no dark, deep flavors no, it's in there. Very light. But you know, it, it's it's just a it's just a really nice sipping bourbon, and you know, for the non-allocated list, I was really glad that one made it. Remember too. what you paid? Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Really? Mm -hmm. That's a good deal for fifty bucks. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, really good. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're getting into Trenton's. I mean, you might even like this over the some of the allocated stuff. I yeah, I do. Yeah. He's been, he's been beating this drum for a while. I had to. Widow Jane Decadence came in third place on our list. I'm, I'm giving you the platform, bro. This and I, I said this in a previous <laughs> video. It's like if you were to shotgun a maple tree. I mean, it's it's so freaking good. It's it's hard. And to be fair, it's it's sweet and it's, it's finished in uh, maple syrup barrels. So if you're not a huge fan of sweet finishes or finishes at all, this might not be your bag. And it's about... 80 to 80 to 90 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it is up there, especially, but it's so good. I don't know how available it is in other areas, but we can pick this up in our area by the case if we wanted to. Well, I will say this. I visited Harry today at Bees okay. today. Uh -huh. He's got one left, and he said that's all he's going to have until next year. Really? So if you want one and you're anywhere around Holbert, Indiana, there's one on the shelf. Now, this bottle will cost you, I've seen it anywhere oh from around... <laughs> from around 85 to 100 bucks get the stretcher bro right <laughs> so it's wow. it's 91 proof it's it's anywhere between 85 and 100 dollars i've sipped on this a little bit last night trent because i really want to get a handle on it for this video 
to me, it's like you say, it, it's, it's really nice and sweet, but I still get the good characteristics of that Widow Jane bourbon. Yep. That maple barrel finish does not, it absolutely does not wash out the bourbon. No. It's not like, I know some people have asked, is this like a, uh, a flavored type of bourbon? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. You still get those great qualities, the deep brown sugar, um, some baking spices, but in the middle of the palate, to the back of the palate, it really picks up on that maple syrup yeah. note, and it's just luscious. It's really, really nice. And what's what's not to like? I'd be interested if if you've tried this and you aren't in love with it, like I am. I'd be interested to kind of see what your knocks on it are, because I'm a little bit biased in this situation. There's nothing in this that I can really pick out that's like that I would yeah. that I would put against it on, on paper. So if you tried it and you're not a huge fan, please leave a comment. And let me know what yeah. what your beef is with it, because I'd love to know. It's really really good. I just now noticed this too, Trent, but the three we have up on the bar top are less than 100 proof. This is? Yeah, 91 proof. Oh, shoot. I'm surprised oh, me too. <laughs> that we have three that are actually under 100 proof, but we're going to change that right now. Our next bottle that came in number two, Trenton, Calumet 16 year. This is the only one up here that I haven't had. Oh, really? Well, except in except our, tasting. our tasting. Yeah. Okay. You probably forgot about it then yeah. by then. It's 106 proof, all right? It's going to run you roughly about $150, all right? Now, Calumet, they do source, I believe it's Western Springs Beverage or something like that. This is? That I found. Interesting. You know, they source from Western Springs Beverage. Um, but to me, this, this, this kind of rivals that quintessential bourbon uh -huh. for me. It's interesting because I, I saw a lot of hubbub and other things about this when it came out, and I, I didn't pick one up, but I heard it was like very cherry cough droppy. And it's weird because when I smelled it, it was like, I got, it immediately gave me like reminders of a Hall's cough drop, like the cherry Hall's cough drop. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that's probably not very good, but the nose is actually very pleasant. It's not like, it's not assaulting your nose like, like a cough drop does. Well, as you can see, we've had a little bit of it. And it's opened up beautifully. That that medicinal cherry is toned down. And I picked up the cherry on the nose as well, too, Trenton. Ooh. But on the palate, you get that oak note. Yeah, that's and, nice. it, and it's not a harsh oak note that you would think in a 16-year. It's a beautiful oak note. Some darker flavors, that deep brown sugar molasses. But then that, that cherry comes through, too. That's really nice. It, it's really spectacular. I really love this one. I vaguely remember the palate from our tasting. And I think out of the, all the ones that we tasted when we blinded for the non-allocated, this is the only one that I hadn't had that was on that list. Possibly, It's yeah. good, though. Yeah, I like Because you don't have this one at home. No, Europe. I like the 15, um, mm -hmm. and the 14 was good, too, but this one, step above, I like this one. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, really, really nice. All right. Numero uno, Trenton. Yep. Number one. Did, did, did this surprise you when this was number one? No. no. You love it. Kent loves it. Justin became a big fan, and I like it a lot as well. Thanks to your drinking buddy for this recommendation. From ASW Distillery, Fiddler Georgia Hartwood came in number one for 2022. And this is a pick. And we were in the process of doing a pick with them, and the ones that we tasted are even better than this one. I know. And that's saying a lot, because this is fantastic. We also need to mention, though, that, that you can pick these up, because this is a single barrel, uh, I believe we call it uh, barrel, yeah, barrel strength. This is a single barrel barrel strength, so you can pick it up also. This is a store pick that I picked up in Arizona from Total Wine, but this can be purchased otherwise, too, Yeah, you know, right off the shelf. Um, it's about 80 bucks, Trenton. Oh, apologize, I forgot the proof. 116.4 proof. Did you the the uh, mash bill on this trend is 51% corn, 45% wheat. It's a wheater. Yep. Interesting. And the rest no of it's a little like bit so of much. barley. So it's 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 yeah. a pretty high wheater too. Wow. I did not know that. It was aged, this. but then finished. They took some uh, uh, staves. Yeah. Um, apologize. White oak staves. 
my bad, white oak staves, hand charred them, hmm. and put them in the barrel for a finish process. Well, I know that when we've done, they ended up sending us three samples for our pick, and it was like we had the choice between one stave, like 13 and 26. So there's a wide variety of, of different options. I don't know if this is listed on how many staves there are in it. Yeah, I'm but not it's sure. so good. Mm -hmm. It's like what, 75, 80 bucks too? Something like that? Mm hmm. Wow. It's just so dark. I oddly get some like cotton candy on the nose or like a, a really sweet. Okay, that's, that's weird. You know, I would never, I would never mention cotton candy. You never agree with me? <laughs> not, <laughs> not that. I wouldn't say cotton candy because I hate cotton candy, but. Oh, I don't like it either. I really wrote down like a toffee caramel note, but then a candy ish is basically what I wrote down. Somewhere, something along the candy line. Yeah. You know, there's like a, there's like a sweetness there that really yep. isn't to me, uh, along those lines of brown sugar or anything else. It's, it's definitely like a yeah. candy type note. However, back palate and into the finish, you really get those deep barrel char notes. And it's weird because like, during the evolution of the flavors in this bottle, it, and I don't know if it's because we just came off of the Widow Jane Decadence, but I could mistake this for like a finished product. Hmm. It's that sweet. I don't know that I've had many weeded bourbons like this. Oh yeah, it's definitely nice and sweet. I will say though, there's a definite char note moving into the finish, mm -hmm. for sure. And I'm positive that's that's what comes along with those hand charred white oak staves. Yeah. You know, in their finishing process, you definitely will get that. But to me, it just adds to the depth. Yeah. Of what you're sipping. And being a weeder and a high wheat like that, it's very nice and soft on the palate. Wow. It's really a, a really nice sipper. Yeah. It, um, it, it's it's fabulous. I'm glad that came in first. I'm not I'm not totally surprised, but it's if you if you see one of these pick it up, they have a lot of it's not just the fiddler heartwood, they they sent us an Amberana finish that was fantastic. It's like if you shoved a gingerbread house in a in a bottle of whiskey and let it sit there <laughs> for a while, uh, they got that some really true. good rise too. Yeah. Those are fantastic. Yeah. But if you really see one stuff. of these, don't pass it up. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we have for you today, boy. I'll tell you what. Honestly, Trent and I had a fantastic time this year coming up with our top five in about every category we can think of. It was tough. And I'm glad we did it like that too, yeah. because it's just a lot of fun. It was a whole bunch of fun. And we're going to finish it off today with this, our top five non-allocated bourbons. If you think we missed any that should be on this list, well, I good. would absolutely love to know yeah. because that's my bag. Love to know. So anyways, thanks so much to each and every one of you. Boy, we appreciate you. We really, really do. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. And we'll see you next time for our 2022 wrap-up review moving into 2023 video and don't forget the live show this Friday 8 p.m. See you next time right down here in the good old basement bourbon bar. That kind of stunk. Yeah. <laughs>